pig being. Do you ever wonder why some speakers leave a lasting impression while others are quickly forgotten? Mike is here to tell you why. In his seventh speech from the Competent Communicator Manual, Research Your Topic, Mike is here to paint a picture with words. His speech is titled, The Biology of Influence Through Public Speaking. Welcome, Mike Higby. Tell me, and I forget. Show me, and I remember. Involve me, and I understand. As speakers, when you're up here, the essence of what you're trying to do is you're trying to, you're one mind, and you're trying to influence tens, hundreds, maybe thousands of other minds. But did you know that your words can have an effect, can change the actual physical makeup of the brain? So how many of you thought that you develop all the brain cells you're going to develop until a certain age, and then your brain stops? Right? That's, that's sort of what we've been taught. That's what, you know, that's what I remember being taught. We know now that beyond doubt, that is not true. Your brain is just like the Phoenix Preserves. So you have, you have those paths that have been walked on maybe 20 years ago. One person walked on it. And then hundreds of people walked on it. Now every day, thousands of people walk on it. It's the Squaw Peak uh, Summit Trail. And then you have those other paths that, way back when, they might have been popular and then people stopped walking on them, and now you can no longer discern them, they're overgrown, you can't see them anymore. That is your brain. Your brain is constantly developing new pathways and getting rid of old ones that you don't use. So, how, as speakers, can we create these new pathways in our listeners? We have to understand biology of the brain. Your brain is very plastic. The word plastic means forever changing. When you, you have your, your brain cell, which is the neuron, these neurons have in the front of them what are called dendrites. They connect to one another, and they, 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 that's how they communicate with each other. These dendrites are basically, they're like finger-like projections that are coming off the front of it. They grab onto the tail of another neuron, and they communicate. Now, if, if I give you a thought, and that thought is going to hit these neurons, that first neuron is going to transfer that communication to the second one. That is short-term memory. That is you remembering my speech long enough to write my evaluation. And then you leave the meeting, and you remember nothing. But as speakers, we want to do more than that. We want people to remember it. If I give you a thought that you deem as important, then that second nerve transmits that communication back to the first one. And that first one gives it back to the second one. It's a game of ping pong. That, that is then followed by an increase in blood supply. You develop this new pathway, and the blood supply comes to nourish that pathway. So it gets very strong, and it stays there. And you remember that thought. That is long-term memory. That is you talking about my speech at Christmas dinner, not just after the meeting. Now, this increase in blood flow to these new pathways can be measured by something called a functional MRI. That measures blood flow to certain areas of the brain. So how do we as speakers communicate our ideas in such a way that you develop that new, that new connection, that new pathway and our listeners. Well, there's, there's three ways that I have researched that are proven and true. Number one, be visual. When you speak, you want to speak in pictures. It's been proven in studies that people do think in pictures and they remember images better than they do words. So it's to remember the old adage, never tell your audience something when you can show them. And there was a study done, it involved 41 groups, and they compared, they compared these groups, it was two groups, one that were, learned with words alone, and one group that learned with words and illustrations. 
And these studies show that 36 of these groups tested better on the, uh, when they used illustrations and words. So be visual. So what, what makes more of, a, more of an impact to you? Um, Mitt Romney is a boring speaker. Or my impression of myself when watching Mitt Romney speak. <laughs> I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican, but he is boring. You just want to get up there and shake him and say, come on, wake up, speak with a little bit of emotion. So be visual, show your audience. Number two, you want to use questions to involve your audience and involve your audience in as many ways as possible. So there was a study done that compared two groups show, uh, learning Newton's law of motion. One group studied on a computer simulator. The other group learned it by being questioned. Both groups did equally well on the test. However, the people using a computer simulator answered the questions much quicker than the other group. So involve your audience as much as possible, but use questions. And then the third way that you want to get your audience to remember your message, is to emotionalize it. I was speaking last week, I was in Denver, I was speaking to a group of medical professionals on psoriasis. And a lot of people, a lot of, yeah, a lot of people just their perception of psoriasis is it's this annoying skin disease, but come on, people are dying of heart disease, who cares? Well, I started out the meeting talking about my patients, my patients who were depressed and who were suicidal. I emotionalized, I humanized the psoriasis. I didn't start out talking medical jargon and treatments. So emotionalize your message. And this is another study that was done using functional MRIs. And they showed that two groups, one that was given thoughts that were emotionalized, positive and negative, another group that was using, that was learned using plain words, they measured the blood flow to key areas of memory and they showed that the, the group that learned about words that were emotionalized had much increased blood flow to these areas of the brain. So emotionalize your message and people are going to remember it. So if you remember nothing else from today, remember this old Chinese proverb. Tell me and I forget. Show me and I remember. Involve me and I understand. Not until